Good evening. This is All India Radio and I'm Tanvi Taneja with the news at 9. The headlines Prime Minister Narendra Modi says controller and auditor general should be a catalyst for good governance Environment Minister Prakash Javadekar calls for collective action to tackle air pollution 2 lakh gram panchayats to be connected with internet and broadband by March next year New Delhi asks Islamabad to provide consular access to two to its two arrested nationals High Tech Interactive Multimedia Exhibition IFI at 50 showcasing Indian cinema inaugurated in Goa and in ISSF World Cup finals shooters Manu Bhakar Elavenal Valarivan and Divyansh Pawar clinch gold medals in China Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said controller and auditor general caj should be a catalyst for good governance and should not be limited to just statistics and procedures addressing a conclave of accountants general and deputy accountants general in new delhi today the prime minister asked caj to develop technical tools to check fraud in government departments and play a role in making india a 5 trillion dollar economy Mr Modi said CAG should look for innovative methods to deal with occupational fraud to improve governance and efficiency CAG ko tukdon mein sochne ke bajaye sampurnata mein kaam karne ki zarurat hai sirf aankdon aur prakriyaon tak hi ye sangham simit nahi reh sakta hai balki waqai mein good governance ke ek catalyst ke roop mein aage aana hai CAG ko सीएजी प्लस बनाने के सुझाव पर आप गंभीरता से अमल कर रहे हैं द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड द गवर्नमेंट वॉन्ट्स टू मूव टू एविडेंस बैक्ड पॉलिसी मेकिंग बाय 2022 थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी एंड द कंट्रोलर एंड ऑडिटर जनरल सीएजे कैन प्ले अ रोल बाय बिकमिंग अ थिंक टैंक एंड फोकसिंग ऑन बिग डेटा एनालिसिस ahead of his address the prime minister unveiled a statue of mahatma gandhi at the cag office premises in his address controller and auditor general rajiv mehrushi said his office is constantly reviewing its systems to improve audit effectiveness he said cag will be able to conduct a 100% audit of its expenditures and revenues if all the transactions are conducted on it platforms the two day conclave is being held on the theme transforming audit and assurance in a digital world to consolidate experience and learning and chart out the path of indian audit and accounts department in the coming years union environment minister prakash javadekar has emphasized that urban forestry school nurseries and public participation are needed to reduce air pollution in the country replying to calling attention motion to the situation arising out of the dangerous levels of air pollution in delhi and other parts of the country mr javadekar said different factors are responsible for air pollution in various cities he said the center has launched the national action for clean air and 122 cities have been identified where air pollution is above the limit this ministry is collaborating under national clean air program with state pollution control board and leading academic institution in the state for which mous have been signed the ministry has designated iit kanpur as the nodal academic institution to coordinate with all other iits and other leading universities ministry has allocated 10 crore each for 28 cities that is 280 crores for million plus populations for public awareness capacity building source apportionment study mechanical street sweeper water sprinklers mobile enforcement unit mr javadekar called for collective action to tackle air pollution saying the government is committed to check the menace in the coming years the minister listed series of measures taken by the nda government saying that india has increased its forest cover by 13000 square kilometers The union government has set a target to provide internet and broadband connectivity to 2 lakh gram panchayats by March next year. 
in a written reply in the Rajya Sabha, Electronics and Information Technology Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad said, a total of over 1,28,000 gram panchayats have been made service ready till the 7th of this month. The minister said the Bharat Net project is being implemented in a phased manner to provide broadband and internet connectivity to all 2,50,000 gram panchayats in the country. Mr. Prasad said as of now, Wi-Fi hotspots have been installed in around 45,000 gram panchayats and services are being provided in over 16,000 gram panchayats. The Rajya Sabha today referred the Sarugase Regulation Bill 2019 to the Select Committee for further scrutiny. Yesterday, during the discussion on the bill, members from the opposition parties, including the Congress and others, had demanded the government to send the bill to the Select Committee for wider consultation. The Bharatiya Janata Party BJP today hit out at the Congress over electoral bonds, accusing it of spreading lies about the electoral bond scheme. Briefing media in New Delhi this evening, Union Minister Piyush Goyal said the scheme helped in weeding out corruption in politics. He said security features have been incorporated while issuing bonds to political parties. Mr. Goyal said that the NDA government put a stop to donations of huge amounts of cash being made to political parties and capped the limit to 2,000 rupees only. He said the government has supported donations to political parties through official channels. He alleged that the Congress opposing the scheme reflects their support towards corruption. After week-long deliberations in Delhi and Mumbai between senior Congress and NCP leaders, it is finally emerging that both the parties have in principle agreed to forge an alliance with the Shiv Sena in Maharashtra. While Shiv Sena Chief Uddhav Thakre has called a meeting of all its MLAs tomorrow morning, a meeting of Congress Legislative Party to elect their leader is also scheduled for tomorrow in Mumbai. Our correspondent is telling us more. Senior Congress leader and former Maharashtra Chief Minister Prithviraj Chavan today said his party and the NCP have finalized all the modalities regarding government formation in Maharashtra. Stating that there is unanimity between Congress and NCP on all issues, Mr. Chavan said discussions will now be held with smaller alliance partners like Samajwadi Party, Swabhimani Shetkari Sangathan and Bahujan Vikas Agadi. He added that once all the parties are on board, a meeting with Shiv Sena leaders will be held in Mumbai tomorrow evening. Refusing to divulge any details about the power sharing formula, Mr. Chavan said, the same will be revealed only after an alliance with the Shiv Sena is formalized officially. Nisha Rani, AIR News, Mumbai. The election commission team led by Chief Election Commissioner Sunil Arora held marathon meetings in Ranchi for two days on assembly poll preparations in Jharkhand. Meanwhile, campaigning for the first phase of elections to 13 seats in the state going to polls on November 30th has intensified. BJP National President Amit Shah addressed public meetings in Manika and Lohardagga today. Star campaigners of the Congress, the JMM, the JVM and the Ajsu Party are also busy in public meetings. Assembly elections are being held in five phases from November 30th to December 20th, while counting of votes will be held on December 23rd. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, visit our News on AIR app and follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. You can also visit our website www.newsonair.com. India has asked Pakistan to provide consular access to two of its nationals who were arrested by the neighboring country. Briefing media in New Delhi today, External Affairs Ministry spokesman Ravish Kumar said, India has sought their repatriation without any harm. He said the sudden arrest of the two Indians, Prashant Vendam and Dhari Lal, came as a surprise, for India had informed Pakistan that they may have crossed over inadvertently. We believed that they have inadvertently crossed over to uh, Pakistan sometime in 2016-17. And when we were told about this incident, we actually had informed 
the Pakistani side through Nod Bharba, which means we had officially taken up the matter with them. The sudden announcement of the arrest, you know, of these two people, you know, through the media, I think is a matter of surprise to us. We hope that these two Indian nationals, they are not used or they do not become a victim of Pakistani propaganda. Mr. Kumar also said, Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will witness the opening day's play of India's maiden day-night cricket test match in Kolkata tomorrow at the request of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He said this request was made in view of the historic nature of the first ever day-night cricket test match to be played on the Indian soil and bearing in mind the special occasion that this match represents in Indian sport. Mr. Mahinda Rajapaksha today took oath as the new Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. He was sworn in by President Gotabaya Rajapaksha, his younger brother, after Ranil Vikramasinghe resigned from his post today. India has said that its relations with Sri Lanka are independent of relations with third countries. Briefing media in New Delhi this evening, External Affairs Ministry spokesman Ravish Kumar said, India's multifaceted relationship with Sri Lanka stands on its own footing and is rooted in geographical proximity and historical connections. He said that External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar visited Colombo as a special envoy of the Prime Minister a few days ago to convey Indian Prime Minister's greetings to the newly elected President of Sri Lanka. And now news from the Cine world. India's biggest film festival, IFI 2019, the golden jubilee of India's international film festival. Join us on All India Radio News for all about IFI at 50. Information and Broadcasting Secretary Amit Kare today inaugurated a high-tech, interactive, multimedia digital exhibition, IFI at 50, at the Kala Academy in Parnaji, Goa. Mr. Kare said the exhibition will benefit the old and the young alike, adding that it will be easier for the listeners to gather information on various dimensions of filmmaking. एक डिजिटल एग्जीबिशन का उद्घाटन हुआ है सबसे बड़ी बात है कि इफी में 50 अंक उसके पूरे हुए हैं और डिजिटल माध्यम से हम उसके बारे में जानकारी देना चाहते हैं डिजिटल एग्जीबिशन इसलिए कि इंटरैक्टिव होगा लोग उसमें विशेष रूप से जो बच्चे हैं और युवा हैं खुद हाथ लगा करके देख करके हेडफोन लगा करके बहुत जानकारी प्राप्त कर सकते हैं the exhibition IFI at 50 is a tribute to the journey of IFI from its inception in 1952 till date. Meanwhile, the highlights of the second day of the ongoing film festival in Goa included the inauguration of the Indian Panorama section. Abigail, one of the eight Russian movies, was also screened today. We have a report. On the second day of IFI 2019 in Goa, as many as 50 movies have been screened in cinema halls across 10 different venues. This year's focus country is Russia. Eight movies from that country will be screened in this festival, and movies promise to enthrall the audience. The session on master classes began today with one of the prominent names in film industry, Madhur Bhandarkar, informing about the nuances in filmmaking to aspiring filmmakers. The Russian ambassador to India, Mr. Nikolai Kudashev, while talking to press, said the time is ripe for joint filmmaking. And both India and Russia should collaborate to bring the heritage of two countries together. Kunal Shinde, AIM News, Panji, Goa. On to sports news. In shooting, India's young shooters touched another sensational high with Manu Bhakar, Ella Venal, Vala Rivan and Divyansh Pawar clinching gold medals in their events to give the country its best ever single day show in the ISSF World Cup Finals in Futian, China today. India are currently at the top of the table with three gold medals followed by China with two gold. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says controller and auditor general should be a catalyst for good governance. Environment Minister Prakash Javadekar calls for collective action to tackle air pollution. Two lakh gram panchayats to be connected with internet and broadband by March next year. New Delhi asks Islamabad to provide consular access to its two arrested nationals. High-tech interactive multimedia exhibition IFI at 50 showcasing Indian cinema inaugurated in Goa. 
and in ISSF World Cup Finals. Shooters Manu Bhakar, Ella Venalwala Ribbon and Divyansh Pawar clinched gold medals in China. And that is all in the news at 9. Good night.